All right, here's a good compound fraction problem that involves radicals. And there's a nice trick that I want to show you here to do these problems. First of all, there's a couple ways to do this problem, but my favorite way to do it is by clearing the denominator, or clearing the fraction is what I call it. You're clearing the fraction, and you're, what you're doing is you're going to take, since root 5 is the least common denominator on the top and the bottom, you're going to multiply everything by root 5. And all that does is... Um, it does nothing to the to this fraction. This fraction is still going to be the same fraction. It's kind of like taking one half and changing it into three sixths. You multiply the top and bottom by the same number. You didn't change the fraction. It might look different, but it's the same number. So that's what we're doing. And when I do that, make make sure I distribute it to both terms in the top and bottom. And I'm going to get root five times one, which is root five minus one. And on the bottom, I'm going to get root five plus 1. Now, what I need to do, I'm not done yet, because now I need to take this and I need to, I need to multiply by the conjugate, because one of the things you can't have in the denominator is a radical. So I'm going to multiply that by the conjugate of the denominator. Here's the trick. The conjugate is not root 5 minus 1. That's not the conjugate. The conjugate is negative root 5 plus 1. You need to change the sign of the radical term. Or if you're doing complex numbers, you need to change the sign of the i term, the complex term. So one of the things I like to do is just rewrite this problem. I'll go ahead and rewrite it down here so it looks, so it's in standard form. So this is really, this is really a negative 1 here, plus root 5, and this is 1 plus root 5. Now what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to multiply by the conjugate which is one, of the denominator, which is 1 minus root 5, on the top and bottom. Again, I've got to do it on the top and bottom. I can't just do it on the bottom because it wouldn't be the same number. But now because I'm multiplying by the same thing on the top and bottom, it's kind of like turning 1 half into 3 6. It's totally legal. I can do that, and it's going to simplify my, my, equation, or my expression. So let's do this. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative root 5, I'm sorry, positive root 5 minus root 5 is 0 root 5. That's why we did this, because it gets rid of the radical. And then negative root 5 squared is just negative 5, or negative square root of 25 is just negative 5. So in the denominator, I'm going to have negative 4. Now let's take care of the numerator. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 plus root 5, plus another root 5, because a negative times a negative is a positive, minus root 5 squared, which is 5. These things add together to give you negative 6. These things add to give you to give you 2 root 5. And I'm almost done. Now I can simplify. Notice that I can factor out a 2 up here, so that equals in fact, let's factor out a negative 2 so that I can get rid of this negative sign down here. Negative 2, and then what I'd be left with here is positive 3 and a negative root 5. I factored out a negative 2 so that my negative on the top and bottom, so now this right here is going to cancel. A negative 2 divided by a negative 4 is just going to give you a positive 2 in the, bo in the bottom. Now, your answer, they might in standard form, which would be, distribute the 2, which would be 3 halves minus root 5 over 2. And that's your answer. Now, if you want to make sure you did it right, because there's a lot of algebra here, you could have made a mistake. I would take this number that you had for your answer, just punch that into your graphing calculator carefully, and then take this original expression punch it into your graphing calculator again carefully and make sure that the two decimals are the same.